Okay, first script we're going to write, it's just going to be a little uh, little ball script, get the ball moving around. So just create a new folder, call it scripts. Okay, and then create a new script. I'm just going to call it ball. Open that one up. Uh, yeah, all we're going to do, we're not going to use, we're not going to use the physics, although it's worth mentioning we're going to need a rigid body on the, a rigid body component on the, um, on our game object. Um, that's, that's just going to allow, allow collisions to be detected. Okay, so how we, there's many ways we can do this. One way is just going to, you know, we call it an attribute at the top of the class, just go require component, right? And you just go type of rigid body and that's going to make sure make sure it attaches a rigid body whenever you whenever you put this script on a, a rigid body will get attached okay and so now we're just going to create a little velocity uh, vector so we'll call it vector 3 velocity okay and when we start off uh, we're going to want we're going to want the velocity to be like uh, randomly either going towards the player or the computer so how we can do that we, first, first of all, we've got to figure out, okay, the, that's on the Z axis. So we'll get, a, we'll get a Z value, just go int Z equals, we can go random k dot range. Oopsie daisy, random dot range. Okay, and we just want to know whether, which direction. So we kind of like, it's like a coin toss almost, you know. We want it to be one or negative one, moving one or negative one on the Z, Z axis. And how we can do that is we get an integer between zero and two. Uh, exclusive of two, so it'll either be zero or one. If we then multiply that by two, it'll be either zero or two. If we subtract one, it'll either be negative one or one. So we random dot range zero and two times two minus one. Okay, I'm just gonna put a little, make sure we, oh wait, no, we are doing an integer. Yeah, now that, oh uh, yeah, but actually no, it really should be a float because we're gonna be attaching it to a, a vector three and that works in floats. Okay, floater. Floats. Okay. Okay, and that'll, that'll convert it to a to a float. Whoopsie daisy. Uh, okay, and now um, we're also going to need one for the x axis. That's going to be how 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 ricochet the how ricochet the ball is. You know, so if it was zero on the z x axis, it will only go forwards and backwards. If it was if it was one on the x-axis, one on the z, one on the x, it'll be a 45 degree angle. So we maybe want it to be, yeah, somewhere between, we never want it to be coming forward and backwards, then you get like a stalemate. So we want it to be somewhere between maybe like 0.2 and 1. So I, yeah, somewhere between maybe about 10 degrees and 45 degrees, uh, as you know, as the ball kind of ricochets around. So how we can do that is again, we want it, we want it to be going either left or right. So, so we can do pretty much exactly, we can copy and paste this exact operation. Uh, and yeah, for the x-axis, and then make sure we multiply it by some, some random value between 0.2 and 1. Random dot range, okay, and 0 0.2, we're gonna go float range, and 1f, okay. Yeah, and that'll give us, yeah, that'll give us some, yeah, some value on the x-axis. Um, yeah, okay, and now we're just going to uh, 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 set the velocity. So we just say velocity equals new vector 3, right? And we just go, okay, x, uh, 0 on the y-axis. For now, we could do 3D. It wouldn't be, wouldn't be too difficult to implement. You know, where it's going up and down a bit as well as left and right. But for now, we'll just keep it, keep it 2D. Okay. And now, uh, all we got to do, remember, because we're going to be working with uh, collisions, we're going to make sure that uh, we use fixed update. It's kind of just going to make sure it's in sync with the physics system. Okay, now we say transform dot, we're just going to, every frame, the position, add the velocity to the position. Yeah, so, yeah, so, sorry, yeah. So the position gets, uh, you know, velocity of, say, one on the z-axis z means it moves by one every frame. So transform dot position, K equal, uh, plus equals plus equals velocity. Okay, oh, and and also we're going to want to normalize it. And so let's say we want to have a speed, you know. So so we say just say float uh, speed equals maybe zero point one maybe 
and we just put that as a range between uh, zero and one. Okay, and then how we can how we can make sure that it's always going to equal that. Uh, the the velocity will always be that speed. Now we've got the velocity. Now we've got the direction. We're going to make sure that it's always at that speed. We can just say velocity. Uh, just normalize it. So velocity equals velocity dot normalized, and then multiply that by speed. All right. So now we can probably give that a go. Uh, we just grab grab this uh, script. And uh, wait, I'll, show, I'll, show, actually I'll show this, so at the moment there's no rigid body, right? But if we drag the script onto it, so it just attaches a rigid body like that. Okay, now I didn't make that speed that speed variable public. So that's just all I've got to do here. So make it sure that's a public variable, public float speed. Okay. And there it is. Beautiful. Okay, so if we hit play, hopefully we'll get a little ball flying off. All right, some random direction. Okay, cool. And then if we hit play again, it'll hopefully be a different direction again. Okay, and there's one more thing we've got to make sure we do is turn off gravity, or it's just going to drop. <laughs> okay, so now if we hit, now if we hit, now if we hit play, we should get the ball moving at whatever speed we set this to. Uh, you'll notice we're getting sort of collisions, and and the ball is kind of like uh, it's acting a bit strangely. But we can we can sort we can like customize what those collisions will do. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll tailor that. Yeah, so at the moment, yeah, we're getting the ball kind of moving at the beginning of the each frame. Okay. Now we can work on collisions. Okay, so we, how we do that is just go down, down on collision enter. So we go void on collision enter. Okay, and there's uh, this, this is a special, special, special function that's going to get called every time that the ball collides with another another game object. Okay, collision, collision, okay. And we're just gonna, we're just gonna switch the name of the thing that we hit so that we know, um, yeah, we know how to act. So we'll say switch. Okay, we just go collision, collision dot, dot transform dot name. Okay, in the case of if it's the uh, uh, bounds bounds to the west or the east, it's going to ricochet off. So we say case bounds. Oh wait, it is the name, so we'll do the string bounds uh, east. Okay. Also, in the case of bounds west. Okay, and in in the, in that case, all we're going to do is we're going to multiply the x-axis by negative one. So if the x-axis, you know, like uh, whatever whatever direction you're going on the x-axis, do the opposite of what it was doing. Um, we just go velocity velocity dot x uh, times equals negative one. Okay, and make sure we return out of the switch statement. All right, and that's yeah, that's all we got to do for for the bounds. Um, I'm trying to remember what we called them. Okay, yeah, so the bounds, we've got to get these names exactly right. It won't work unless it's exactly bound south, bounds north, you know, these names. Okay, so uh, in the case of bound south and north, we want it to reset the ball's position just to the, to the middle. In the case of the player or computer paddle, I'm just going to make sure I put a space in that player paddle. Uh, in the case of hitting the paddle, we're just going to multiply the Z, the Z value by, by negative one. Kind of, yeah, the same ricochet effect. Okay, so yeah, we just go in here, we just go case bounds north, okay, in, in that case, and also in the bounds south, we're going to, um, uh, we're going to reset the ball's position, that means that someone's called a point. Oh, and yeah, actually what we're really going to need to do is this is going to need to be, we're going to want a new velocity, like reset, re reset the ball's velocity every time. So we're going to want to put this in its own function. Yeah, we'll just call it reset ball. Throw all these in. All right, and, and just make sure the position, we reset the position as well. Uh, so we'll go transform dot position uh, equals vector three dot zero. OK, 
Okay, and make sure we call this in the start function. And also we want to call it in this case, in the case of if someone's scoring a point. All right, and now all we've got to do is uh, the, case of, the case of it hitting either of the paddles. Turn, okay, so we go case uh, player paddle, or in the case of the computer paddle, Uh, we're just going to uh, uh, yeah multiply the z component by by negative one. Plus e dot z times equals negative one, and return out of it. All right. Okay. So that's yeah. That that should be that should be all we need to to see a bit of functionality. We can head back into the game. Press play, see what happens. Okay, the ball's moving a little slowly. So we can adjust that, adjust the speed. All right, so yeah, looks like it's working quite well. The I thought I saw just there the, the it's not really ricocheting off the paddles. I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do a little hack. I'm gonna go back in here and just make this. We're just gonna force it to not have a z axis. So between zero and zero, we'll make sure that the the yeah the z axis of the of the ball's velocity will will just it's just going to go back and forth between the paddles so we can see how that's behaving oh i didn't i didn't name this i didn't name the player paddle correctly again so i'm just going to make sure i've got a space in there okay and yeah i'm just going to change the ball to be a little bit faster Oh yeah, okay, so it looks like we're going off the, uh, not really. Okay, so it's pretty cool, because in play mode we can start playing with things. So if we go back to, uh, go, go to the bounds, if I move this boundary way back, then it does work. So it looks like maybe it's hitting that boundary as well as the paddle. See if it hits, just hits the boundary, it's going to keep resetting. So we may just make sure that boundary is comfortably behind the paddle for now. And do the same with the north boundary. There we go. Okay. Yeah. So that, that's the kind of that's exactly what we want. All right. Oh, and yeah, I could remember that if I do that in play mode, it's going to reset. So just moving back outside of play mode. All right. Um, yeah. So that's it for the ball.